normally what happens is downhillers use downhill tires on downhill bikes and cross country racers use cross country tires on cross country race bikes. And then we have trail tires, which are somewhere in between. I have a giant Trans 29er and I can use that same bike in an XC race and in an enduro stage race. My favorite thing about these short travel 29ers is that you can just change the tires on the bike and it totally changes what you can do with it. Usually the way I have this bike set up is with XC tires. I can just take it out, I can ride any trail and I can have a lot of fun on any trail. I can ride a grade two trail that's super easy and it feels fun. If I were to take my enduro bike on that same grade two trail, it just doesn't feel fun. I really have to work really hard to get the speed I need. It just feels too comfortable. The other reason I use these XC tires is because I can cover more ground and it just feels easier. And I can get to the top of the hill sooner and be able to just go down more. What I decided to do for this test session was to test my power output up the hills and then test my braking down the hills using two different kinds of tires. The trails I used were about two minutes away from my house, which made it super easy to just come back to the house, change tires, have a rest, go back out and test again. These trails are in Rotorua and they're called As You Do, which is the climb. It's about 1.3 Ks and 13.6% gradient. So it's not super easy. And actually I didn't realize it was so steep. It takes a while at about 10 or 12 minutes. The descent right next to it is called Box of Birds, and this is one of my most favorite trails I've ever ridden. This trail is said to be grade three, and there are two options. The easy option continues to be grade three, and actually that's the one I ride most of the time, just because you get about 15 extra turns. I'm second on that one in Strava, and I'm actually pretty much at the limit for what I can do, and I thought, really, that's not the best trail to be testing downhill tires, so let's do the harder line and see what we got. So for the XC tires, I already had them on my bike and they were the Ardent Race 2.2s. They're really light and kind of easy to damage, but on this trail there isn't a ton of rocks, it's just perfect dirt and roots. For the downhill tires, I used an Asagai 2.5 WT on the front with downhill casing and the DHR2 with 3C compound and a 2.4 WT. Otherwise, I used the same bike with brake ace, prototype installed, and a quark power meter to measure my pedaling. So when I had the Ardent Races on, my bike weighed 13.8 kgs, including the data logger, power meter, and extra Garmin, and all the other bits and bobs on the bike. On the uphills, I knew I would actually be doing this test a number of times, so I didn't want to go too hard, so I set my power at 200 watts, and I just tried to stay there on the uphill. On the uphill, again, it felt super easy. The tires really roll super well. And this is why I was a bit concerned, thinking maybe I'm not gonna go that fast down the hill. My normalized power on the climb was 207 watts, and it took me 11 minutes and 50 seconds. So it was actually over pretty painless. At the top, I rested for five minutes, and then I went down the hill focusing on flow and not really trying to sprint. On the descent, I actually felt great. I really liked the tires and they really hooked up in turns. I did feel like I had to break quite a lot because you just don't have the grip to slow down at the very last second. I didn't do any sprints and my normalized power pedaling down the hill was about 40 watts, so it's basically nothing. One of the things I really noticed with the tires is that pumping, I got up the speed really, really quickly. And that's good because I was able to generate the speed that I needed right when I wanted to. So it turns out on the descent, it took me three minutes and 22 seconds based on brake ace. And my flow score was 86.4. So remember the flow score describes the efficiency of your braking based on the intensity, modulation, and duration of all your braking. With these XC tires, I ended up braking 41 times at an average of 1.7 seconds. My total brake time was one minute and 12 and a half seconds, which is, which is actually a lot of braking. And I had 65% of my braking was done with the rear brake. So that was a really good ascent. I made no mistakes. I came back home to change the tires. So I controlled the tire pressure and I chose 19 PSI in the rear and 18 PSI in the front. Switching those tires added an extra 700 grams to my bike for a total weight of 14.5 kgs. Now, if you've ever installed downhill tires on your bike, they're pretty much a beast to install. I ended up puncturing the rim tape a little bit and I didn't actually notice until I got all the way to the top of the hill for the second time. Aww. So I got there, I had a flat tire, had to ride down with a flat tire. Fortunately, I live really close to the trails. I came back home, fixed it, climbed to the top of the hill, took the pump this time and rode it again. As soon as I left the house with the downhill tires, they just felt horrible. So riding on the road, it just felt really slow. And then when I got to the uphill, it just felt like I was working way too hard. So on the way up the hill, since I actually had to do it twice, I had a kind of a range of how long it took. And it took between 12 minutes and 50 seconds and 13 minutes and 13 seconds. My normalized power was 214 watts, which is pretty much close enough going up the hill. So it was a full minute slower with these downhill tires. And actually I would have expected quite a bit more of a time gap. But once I got to the top with the downhill tires for the second time with air in my tires, 
I felt fine, I was ready to go. I rested for five minutes, went down the hill. So all said and done, I got to the bottom and I looked at brake ace and my time was three minutes and 19 seconds. So I was only three seconds faster with these downhill tires on a grade three slash four descent. My flow score was only slightly lower at 84.7. If we dig a little bit deeper into the braking stats, you can see that I only braked 34 times for an average of 1.8 seconds. So it was a little bit longer with the downhill tires, but I braked eight fewer seconds using the downhill tires. This actually would line up with exactly what I thought, that because I can get the grip I need when I want it, with these downhill tires, I can slow down a lot more quickly. This is definitely reflected in some of the other scores that Brake Ace gives us, especially my intensity score, where basically every time I was braking with the downhill tires, it was a highly intense event. So I know that Brake Ace uses a much more accurate GPS unit than what we use with the Garmin or with my phone. And when I looked at Strava when I got home, I was really surprised to see that with the downhill tires, I was actually, I only got my third fastest time down this Boxburg's DH. So this means that according to Strava, my fastest time ever was with these XC tires. All right, so what's the actual takeaway here? Now it's pretty well known that rolling resistance increases when we have something like a downhill tire. Knobs are huge and the, the tread is usually soft. So the reasons for why I went slower up the climb totally make sense. I don't think it was about weight. So check out my article on mtbphd.com where we talk about weight. 700 grams shouldn't make that big of a difference. So yes, rolling resistance is definitely slowing me down on the uphills. At the same time, rolling resistance was probably slowing me down as well on the downhill. I know that with the XC tire, I could just do a little bit of pumping and I'd be up to speed right away. With the downhill tires, it was definitely a lot more work. So that means on some of these straight sections where there was no braking involved, I was actually going faster on the XC tires. But what we can see with the increased brake time is that I actually had to start braking a lot sooner because I wasn't getting the grip that I needed with the XC tires. What this means is that I was going faster when I wasn't braking with the XC tires, but I couldn't brake quickly enough with the XC tires to really slow down and keep going fast. So what we see then is a wash in the time. Now, practically speaking, I know this isn't gonna be possible for everyone to try XC tires all the time. And actually, if I'm riding with my friends, I'm probably gonna choose the enduro bike with the downhill tires already set up. Now, I did go back to the same trail a few times that next weekend with a fast rider that I was helping with brake ace. He got his best time and I got my new best time and I was using my enduro bike. But really what this means for me is I'm gonna continue to go out with my short travel XC bike with the XC tires because I can really have a lot of fun riding. I can really cover that ground that I really wanna cover. And the added bonus is I don't really go that much slower downhills. It definitely feels a lot sketchier. So it's overall a really good time. So let me know in the comments below if you think you'll use XC tires on your bike. I know there's a lot of trails where it's probably not possible. I'm definitely back home in Pennsylvania. It would not be possible for me to use XC tires all the time, especially when I'm trying to go fast. I just cut tires all the time. Now there's definitely a huge deep dive that we can go into just looking at brake ace. So I'd like to get into this at some point. I'll probably do a webinar. So head over to brakeace.com, sign up for that webinar, follow along the brake ace journey. We're gonna be delivering that product soon in the new year. I'm super excited about that. It's been a lot of work, but I want everyone to be able to analyze their rides like this and be able to make the right choices with their equipment. So it is about, yes, getting faster. That's the main reason I made Brake Ace, but it's also for you to be able to analyze your ride properly. So power meters just don't cut it for everything. So Brake Ace combined with a power meter really gives us a really good picture of what's going on. So you can make sound choices in equipment. All right, thanks. See you next time.